And iBooks 2 brings a new textbook experience for the iPad. These are beautiful books. Interactive, gorgeous, fun, engaging. Kids are going to really love to learn with textbooks in iBooks. Rather than describe them, what we'd like to do is show them to you live. So to do that, I'd like to invite up Roger Rosner, our Vice President for Productivity Software. Roger. Thanks, Phil. Good morning. Well, I'm really excited to show you the new iBooks, too. So let's just dive in here. Imagine I'm a high school student, and I'm studying biology. So I tap on iBooks, and I see all the books I'm using for school on this great shelf, including my textbooks. And I'll just tap on my biology book. This is a century in which we've got to solve the great problems and make the great discoveries concerning life on this planet. I'm going to ask you to enter the world of the biologist. I don't think there's ever been a textbook started with such a great intro movie. <laughs> I just swiped past it to get to the table of contents for this book. And here I can use all those familiar multi-touch gestures to navigate through this amazing book. I can swipe down below to see the thumbnails for the pages in this chapter. Or I can swipe up above to go to the next chapter. And when I actually want to get into the book, I just tap on a page thumbnail, and there it goes. And then, of course, I can swipe to get to the next page. And I think you can see immediately, these are gorgeous, gorgeous books. They're really in a class by themselves in terms of rich, engaging layouts. And they have some really cool, rich, engaging, interactive experiences. And this is one here. I'm going to pinch it up to full screen so you can see it better. And now when I tap, we zoom in and we see animated 3D models of the structures inside of a cell. Clearly, no printed textbook could compete with this in terms of communicating and really giving a kid a good understanding of what's going on inside of a cell. And when I'm done, I just pinch, and I'm back on the page. Swipe to go to the next page. Here's another cool one. This has some great DNA animations. And I'll just jump forward to my favorite part of this. This is a comparison of the size of DNA structures to chromosomes. And I'll just tap, I zoom out, tap again to zoom back in. Again, nothing like that on the printed page. Authors have total freedom to make amazing interactive experiences. And here on the page, you also see we have a 3D model of a nucleosome. And I can just swipe to rotate it in 3D space. Let's look at some more. Here's a great interactive. As I swipe my finger across the bottom of it, we increase the density of the structures inside of the cell. It really gives a, a really good understanding of how crowded it is inside of a cell. As you can see, authors just have total freedom in terms of laying out text and graphics on pages, too. Uh, I really like this one. Let's pinch this one up. This is a, a great way to learn about insect biology. Down in the illustration here, if I tap on a structure, the corresponding structure is highlighted on the photographs of insects up above. It's great to explore. It makes a really good impression. It's really easy to understand what's going on. Very cool. Now, of course, sometimes when you're working with a textbook, you really just want to focus on reading the text. We have a perfect way to do that. I'll just rotate my iPad into portrait here. And we relay out the book with the text running down the middle. And I can still get to all my interactives. They're all on the left. And uh, if I want to just uh, tap on one, it takes over the screen. When I'm done, I just pinch back down. Super easy. If I want to get to the table of contents, I just pinch. And there you are. And I can navigate through the book. Let's jump back in. So really, our books have two complete different reading experiences. And I can just use whichever one suits me best. So I think you can already see these books are by far the coolest, most engaging digital textbooks that have ever been done. But it turns out we've just scratched the surface of the new iBooks, too. For instance, 
when I see a glossary term I don't understand, I can just tap on it to get the definition right there. If I want to jump to the whole book's glossary or the book's whole glossary, I just tap on that button. And now we have all the glossary terms here. I can flip from term to term. We have movies and images for the terms. We also have uh, index links back into the book. So if I want to learn more about a particular subject, I just tap. I go straight to the appropriate place in the book. That is so much better than a paper index, or a paper glossary, I should say, should, could ever hope to be. We also have searching. I'll tap to bring up our toolbar. Tap on the search button. Let's say I want to learn about biomes. So I'll just start typing. I get suggestions. Tap on biomes. Now I see a list of every place in the book the word biome occurs. And they're shown in the context in which they occur. So it's really easy for me to know what I want to jump to. And it takes me straight there. And again, this is so much better than a paper index could ever hope to be. Now, you can also just jump to a specific page number. And our search field understands page numbers, too. So if I, let's say the teacher says, everybody go to page 34. I just type 34 into our search. It suggests page 34. And there you go. Super fast, super fluid navigation, totally critical to making a great interactive textbook experience. Here on this page, we have a really cool interactive object. It looks like an image, but I can actually swipe through and see a gallery of images. When I pinch it up to the full screen, I have beautiful, immersive, full screen images. When I'm done, I just pinch back down. Pretty cool. Now, Textbooks tend to have long lists of review questions, typically at the end of a chapter or a, or a section. And they're pretty useful, but they're not that exciting. So we thought we could do something better and more useful. Let me jump to the review at the end of this chapter. I'm going to pinch to get to our table of contents. You can always pinch on a page to get to the table of contents. Here we have a list of topics for this chapter. And I'll just tap on the review topic. And it takes me right there. And we see our review. And uh, the first question is, which one of the following is a savanna? And then there are four pictures of biomes down below. And I can just tap, check, tap check answer. Nope, not that one. Tap here, check answer. I get immediate feedback about what's right or wrong. And we have lots of really nice, interesting layouts and options for review questions. Uh, this is a really cool matching exercise. You can drag and drop. But the bottom line is immediate feedback. And it, it turns you know, a static list of review questions into a really dynamic and really, really uh, useful study tool. Speaking of study tools, another super critical thing, another super critical study tool for, for students is highlighting and note taking. We wanted to make it really easy. So basically, your finger is always ready as a highlighter. You can just swipe over something you're interested in. And when you're ready to, if you want to change the color, say, you just tap on it, change the color. If you want to add a note, tap on the notes icon. And I'll just type, this is on the test. Tap, and it appears in the left margin here. And I can just tap on it. Oops. Tap on it. Ha <laughs> excuse me. I missed it. And it should appear. <laughs> there we go. It should appear on the page. Now, that's really useful. Great. There's no, ex no excuse not to be taking highlights and, and, and notes as you go through the book. But we thought we could make that even more useful. If I tap to bring up our toolbar, tap on the Notes View button. In this view, we collect together and show you all of your notes and highlights for the entire book in one place. Needless to say, this is great if you're studying for a test or writing a paper. It's really useful. But we did something even cooler with this. We have a study cards button here in the upper left. And I'll just tap on it. And now we automatically take all your notes and highlights. And we turn them into study cards. And I can just swipe through. If I see something, I want to see what the note is. I just tap on it. I see what's on the back. And that's really great. But remember those glossary terms we looked at earlier? We also turn those into study cards. We put the terms on the front and the definitions on the back, and I can just tap on them, flip them over. No more ever having to make paper flashcards, right? These are all automatically created for you. And if I'm studying for a test, I can even just shuffle them in random order. 
and go through them. I don't think there's ever been a textbook made it this easy to be a good student. All right, so how do I get these awesome textbooks? Well, we've made that really easy, too. Let's jump back to our bookshelf here. In the top left, there's a button for the store. And I tap on it. It takes me to the iBook store. And here, there's a Categories button. And I tap on that. And I see the beautiful new iBook store Categories view. And we have a brand new textbook category. I'll just tap on that, tap on a book. And now you see all the familiar features of our iBook store. You see a description. Screenshots, which are actually new to the bookstore. You have customer ratings and reviews. You can download a free sample. And even better than that, right? almost everybody in the world knows how to use our amazing one-click purchasing system. And that's exactly how you get the books. You can buy them right here, or you can redeem a code. In either case, they download straight to your iPad, and you own the book forever. You can even re-download it from the cloud if you ever need to. And that is a whirlwind tour of the new iBooks 2. Thank you, Roger.